Let's learn about an object-oriented term called inheritance. Now you've already seen videos where you can create a class and you can make attributes or instance variables in that class and you can write methods in that class that can do work and you can also write a constructor which is called when you instantiate or create that object. Remember the instructor's the constructor name is the same name as the method and you use the keyword new and then the the constructor with a parenthesis parenthesis which says go find that method in the class and use it to create the object so what is inheritance then? inheritance allows you to use what they call a base class also called a super class and a parent class we should just another class that's out there that you've written but other classes can be built upon that class or another class can be derived from that parent class or another class can be a subclass of that parent class and what it does is it says I want to take everything that the parent class has that it will give the subclass and then you can extend it or expand that derived class and add new things for it. Now when we work with parent classes and subclasses, the parent class is usually very generic, meaning we try to keep it as non-specific as possible to represent different items within our environment. For instance, we could say an automobile is a parent class, but a specific type of automobile might be a subclass. Or even more generic or general than that, we could say vehicle is the parent class. And then you could say automobile is a subclass. Or a train, which is a type of vehicle, is a subclass. Or an airplane, which is a type of vehicle, is a subclass. So the base class is very generic, and it's where all the common things go. And then the subclass is where you make it more specific. For instance, person is very generic, but student is very specific. A person has a name. A student also has a name but it can be more specific and actually have something like a GPA that all that not all persons will have so when you think of the person class which is the base class or the parent class you'd ask yourself what's common between all types of persons well probably a first name a last name an age a height um, date of birth hair color all those different things that are common between all persons. And then you go to the subclass, which is based upon parent, and then you make it more specific. GPA, course credits, anything that a student might have that persons might not have. So let's see how to do that. Let's go ahead and create a brand new project and let's go ahead and do a visual C sharp console app and let's just call it inherit me and we'll click OK and that will create a brand new project for us and then we'll want to go ahead and within that project we want to make our parent class which is going to be very generic and that parent class will be called person so let's come over to inherit me right mouse click and we're going to choose add we'll choose class and we'll call this person.cs and in that person class we're going to go ahead and make it public and we're going to give it an attribute a public string first name we'll use camel case public string last name so what we're saying there is every person will have a first name and a last name. While we're here, let's go ahead and write a constructor that we can call when we instantiate a person object. And we'll say that it's a public person constructor. 
and it receives two values, s first and string s last. And then the actual constructor will say first name equals s first and s uh, last name equals s last. So if we ever make an object of type person, we can call this constructor, pass two values to it. We'll take the first value and store it to the first name attribute, and we'll take the second value and store it to the last name attribute. So let's go ahead and make another class. Right mouse click on Inherit Me and choose Add Class. And this one's going to be called student.cs. Click Add. And then we'll come over here and we'll make this a public class also. And we're going to go ahead and make a public double GPA, which students have a GPA. But the interesting thing is not all persons will have a GPA. But every student will have a first name and a last name. So what we're going to do on that class name, we're going to say public class student. And then we're going to put a colon and then the word person. Now what this actually means is when we uh, want this to work, we're going to go ahead and make the student class refer to the person class. Or in other words, when we create a person or a student object, it's going to also include everything person has. Now we're getting an error because we're saying, you know, you just said student is going to refer to person, but the person class has a constructor, and our student class doesn't have a constructor. So let's go ahead and say public student, and in student, we're going to say it receives three parameters. We'll receive a string, s first, a string, s last, and let's receive a double DGPA. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say that the student GPA is equal to DGPA. But we need to tell this student constructor to call the parent class or the super class. Now the super class is person. And the way you tell the child or subclass constructor to call the parent is by saying colon base. And then you can specify what do you want passed to the parent. We want to go ahead and pass s first and s last to the parent. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this on the next line so you can see a little bit better. And you notice all the errors disappear. The person class looks good. The student class looks good. And what this actually means now is if I came back over here to the program and I created a student object, student ostud equals new student, parenthesis. I now need to pass it some values. So let's pass it Greg Anderson. GPA 4.0, I wish, and then would put a semicolon. So when this line is executed, now it says go to the student class, find the constructor that has three parameters, a string, string, and a double coming to it, and pass those to it. So we jump over to the student class, and it says take the first parameter and stick it in the variable s first. So the first parameter is Greg, and that goes into S first. Then it says, hey, who's the next parameter? The next parameter coming in is Anderson. So it goes into S last. And now it wants a third parameter. And the third parameter is 4.0. And it goes into double GPA. Now if you remember right, we said the student class inherits from person. The person class owns the first name and the last name attributes. So we want to go ahead and pass those attributes from the student class to the base class, which is person. So whatever S first received, we're going to pass it and S last. 
to the base constructor, the parent constructor, which is person. So Greg, which went into that S first, is now passed. And Anderson is passed. And these come over here to that constructor. So Greg goes there. Anderson goes there. And we assign Greg to the first name attribute and Anderson to the last name attribute. And then it comes back to the student constructor and says, take the GPA and assign it to the GPA attribute. Now, what's the big deal? Why would you want to do all of this type of stuff? What it allows us to do is write a whole bunch of base classes that are very generic. And we write all the software associated with that base class or that parent class. We write all the attributes and the methods. And once we get a bunch of these base classes that are all working well, then the next time we have to do a project, half of our work or more than that is already done. Because all we have to do now is go create a brand new class and base it upon or inherit from a class that's already there. So this is going to save you a ton of time later on when you start writing programs. And when you work at a company, one person might have all these base classes or parent classes already there, but they almost do exactly what you want. They're so close, but you need it to be more specific. So you just come and create a brand new class and make it more specific by adding whatever you want. Let's come back to the program and let's go ahead and do a console.write line and we'll say first name and we'll go ahead and pause the screen and it would help if we actually said console.read line and if I ran this I'm going to set the debugger uh, let's set the debugger actually on the breakpoint and let's go ahead and debug. We'll run it, start debugging by clicking on debug, start debugging or F5. And now it's going to go out, compile the program, and it's going to run it through the debugger and it's going to hit our breakpoint and it's going to want to stop there and wait for us. So now it's stopping and waiting. Instead of stepping over with the little arrow here, Let's step into, which is F11. Watch what happens. So we step into the student constructor. Why? Because we said, go call the student constructor. So now we step into student constructor. Greg got passed to S first. Anderson got passed to S last. And 4 got shipped to GPA. And now it says, hey, let's go call the parent class and pass Greg and Anderson. So let's do another step into F11 and see where it goes. And now it goes to the person class. And there's Greg, there's Anderson. And we'll go ahead and step into, it assigns those two attributes in the parent class, continues on with the child class, and loads up the GPA, which belongs in the child class. And we come back over to here, and our object now has everything we need in it. How do I know? Because I put my cursor on OSTUDE, click the arrow, and look at all the attributes. We actually don't care, don't, don't worry about who the parent class is, really. All we know is that when we made the student object, it got everything the parent class wanted to give it. And that allows us to create a bunch of base classes and make our child class more specific. I'm going to continue this video. And you're going to learn how scope actually works. Because right now we said everything was public. So go watch part two of Inheritance.